Hey, good day, YouTube. It's August 26, uh, 2017. It's a Saturday. And we're at the uh, Glen Speed Shop. We were hanging out working on the carburetor off of my 79 Chris Craft. It's a 350 Marine Chevy engine. So it's kind of like the one in your car, only it runs the other direction. And it is a Rochester four barrel Marine carburetor. And uh, what we're looking at right now is um, my little electrolysis tank. And that is one of the, uh, the choke butterflies on the secondary side. So right now we've got it in the electrolysis tank. It's been in the carburetor tank for a week. And this thing was disgusting. Watch one of my previous videos on getting that carburetor apart. And then, believe it or not, I'm still fighting some of it this morning. But uh, my issue was, is this uh, carburetor... Uh, you know, the aluminum stuff was pretty corroded, but the steel stuff was completely rusted. And, uh, you know, it's in a boat. It's in a marine environment. So if I get all the rust off, then what? I mean, you don't really paint a, a choke butterfly, right? I mean, this thing has gas in it. It's not going to last. And uh, so I had this idea. And I did a little look into a little research. Um, I've used the electrolysis process often for taking rust off the metal but you can use a reverse process of this to electro plate and that's what i'm going to do today and i haven't done it before so we're going to do it for the first time together i'm going to show you the process in this part one video and then uh, later today i'll do a part two video and uh, we'll come back and see how it all works so let me go over the process of an electrolysis or removing rust with electricity. Um, it's very easy to do. It's very simple to do. Um, there are a million ways to do it. Everybody's got their own ideas. Um, this is a, I'm kind of a cheapskate, so this is an inexpensive way, but it works. Um, everybody's got great ideas and everybody else's ideas work great too. Um, but as you can see, <laughs> we're cooking. So electricity flows from positive to negative, and we're talking about DC power here. So in order to uh, do this electrolysis, you have to make the water electrically conductive. And to do that, there's, uh, we're gonna uh, show you the, the ingredients on this. I should have uh, looked it up a second ago. Um, but sodium carbonate is what we're hunting for. And uh, I know that in this uh, Arm & Hammer laundry booster, which I could not find in the stores, I had to buy this online, has a significant quantity of sodium carbonate in it. Uh, so you can look it up. What I did find while I was waiting for that to arrive was this OxyClean also has sodium carbonate in it, just not in a higher concentrate. And since I already bought this and I've been using it successfully, I'm just gonna use it till I, I use it up. And that will bust into the new box of Arm & Hammer Laundry Booster. So this came with a cup. I don't know how much is in the cup. Um, I used, uh, I got a roughly a gallon and roughly had less than a gallon in this guy. Um, and I used half of one of those scoops. Uh, There's not much science to it. You just need to make it conductive. Um, more is not necessarily better, but it's not worse either. So if you put more in it, it's not going to get more conductive or work any better. You're just using more laundry soap. So uh, you can see this thing is still cooking. Um, so what you do is make it electrically conductive, put a half of a scoop you know a quarter cup something like that into a gallon and uh, this is going to be the tank where we do the electroplate and we'll get to that in a second um I, you simply need a sacrificial anode and in this case i used a a four inch square electrical outlet box uh just because i had it laying around i attached a short piece of copper wire to it and then i uh you can kind of see it through the plastic there that's the butterfly. This is the other one that we haven't put in a tank yet. Get it behind the white background. You can see how gross it is. This sat in the carburetor tank for a week. That's as good as it got. So, 
I, uh, you attach a copper wire to this. This is uh, just a piece of 12 gauge solid copper wire. You can strip out some old Romex um, or if you have another source for it, but solid, you know, it's, it bends and holds its shape. Um, I just use my uh, wire strippers and strip out the ends. You can leave a little on in the middle. I did that. You can take it all off with a knife, however you want to do it, and uh, attach it because it has to be, you know, conductive. Um, and then you can attach your battery charger. You can run 6 volt or 12, it really doesn't matter. You can actually use uh, batteries if you'd like. A couple flashlight batteries would be enough to make this process. But if you got a battery charger, go ahead and use it. However, if you have one of the new battery chargers that makes, I don't know why they make the battery chargers that way, but if your battery's like totally dead, it won't even work. Uh, I have a number of those new ones and they won't work. You're going to have to have an old one. I did find this one at a yard sale the other day uh, in its box. Look at that with all of its instructions for five bucks. And of course I grab them every time I can find them. Um, however, I just, it's the first time I've ever used it and the gauge doesn't work. So what I did was I put a amp meter in line. So, you know, if you've got a meter, I just put an amp meter in line. So what I'm doing is just in line with my negative, I have basically it's running through the meter back on the red to a test lead to here. You can do it on the positive side, negative side, whatever. If you get them reversed, it'll just read, probably read minus or something, a negative but you'll still see what it is. So when I first put it on, I had 1.39 amps. The more rust is removed, the lower the amp draw will be. So when this thing gets down to where it's not bubbling too much uh, and the amperage is down, I don't know what it'll end up going to, half an amp, something like that, that is probably done. Uh, probably, depending on how rusty it is, uh, 20 to 40 minutes, you know, maybe an hour, some, excuse me, something like that. That's about all it's gonna take. This thing's just bubbling away still. So I've got a good cook going here on the electrolysis. So that's getting rid of the rust. And what I'll do is uh, when this one's done, I'll do the plating on it and I'll put another one, uh, another piece in. And when we come back, I'll uh, be able to go over the plating part of this because a I haven't done it yet today's the day I get to try it and then I'll show you how it works I believe it'll work great then again uh, well let's talk about it a little bit so you've seen the electrolysis and here's going to be the plating tank and what we're going to plate it with is zinc and this is a piece of zinc um, zinc is used as a sacrificial anode on many things like water heaters in your RV, um, all the metal parts uh, in a marine environment, your boat, your propeller, um, stuff like that. So I have it on my, even on my little outboard motor. When you get into salt water and stuff, highly corrosive environment, you put what they just call them zincs and uh, the, uh, the salt water and stuff will attack the zinc and it won't attack your aluminum, brass, copper, steel cast iron all that stuff on your boat this is what they sell at the big box stores home depot lowe's etc to put on your roof and it's called this one particular one i got at home depot it's called z stop it is a 50 foot roll and, and you put these up high on your roof and then the rain hits it and a little bit of the uh, zinc comes off and goes down your roof and it kills the moss and everything it's a really good stuff to use this roll is 50 feet uh it was in the ballpark of 23 bucks or something like that um quick tip don't take this uh, wrapper off the outside just dispense it from the center and then you could just cut it off with the tin snips and uh i don't know how big a piece it really needs i've cut in these three or four inches that should be good i punched a hole in them with my uh whitney punch just give me some place to tie the wire to. So I intend just to uh, slide this into the plating tank like so. We'll just bend this wire over, excuse me while I use two hands, like so. 
and that puts that on this side. And then when this thing is done cooking, gets all the rust off of it, we'll uh, take it out. It's the same exact solution. I'll just take it out of this tank, put it over in this tank, and now we need to reverse the polarity, right? Remember, it goes from positive to negative. So we're going to want to uh, put the positive charge, the positive lead of our battery charger or power source or your battery or whatever you're going to use. And then the negative over here on, our, on this piece, which right now has a positive cable on it. And then what is gonna happen is the zinc is going to leave this, this is all zinc, it's gonna leave there and transfer over onto the uh, carburetor piece. Not this one, because it's too rusty. But it has to be all clean and free of all that garbage before we do that. So that will be the uh, uh, part two video coming up. Let's go back here and we're, uh, we're down to 1.06 amps. That's what's being passed. Remember, that's just going through the water. The water we made conductive with sodium carbonate that's in the OxyClean, more concentrated in the Arm & Hammer laundry booster, which, again, I couldn't find it locally. Ordered it on eBay. So, down a little, 1.05 amps. It's transferring from that old 4-inch square electrical box, which you just had it laying around. Any old thing will do, right? And it's just getting artificially rusty because all the rust off of this is going from positive to negative over to that box. And then when we're done again, we'll pull it out, we'll put it in the plating tank, we'll reverse the polarity, and we'll go positive to negative. We'll go positive on the zinc, we'll go negative on the steel, and the, we will essentially galvanize, because that's what galvanizing is, is zinc plating. And we'll be able to plate that in just a matter of minutes. <laughs> that's what I think is going to happen. So, check back on the part two video. There's a chance I'll get these both uploaded uh, in the same day or as quickly as possible so you can watch both the first video and the second video. And during the second video, my plan is to have this one plated, have this one ready to go in the plating tank, and we'll put this one back in uh, for the first time into the electrolysis tank. And we'll have them both running at the same time. So you'll be able to see uh, this piece as it comes out all clean this piece will be plated and this will be going in for plating this one will be going in to the electrolysis tank so that I should be able to show you everything in the second video so thanks for watching thumbs up commenting subscribing running along with me on all these uh, fun little adventures and uh, we'll see you on the next one part two coming up